Hello and welcome. This is Betty Franks Krauss and I appreciate you watching this video. Today I'm going to show you how I am creating on paper. This particular paper is called Bristol paper and I put down a layer of gesso on it before I got started. With most of my artwork I like to start with pencil marks and those first pencil marks were with just a regular number two pencil. And then those darker marks actually are from a grease pencil, which is also known as a china marker. And now I'm putting down some uh, various colors using Neocolor 2 crayons. And these are water soluble, so that means that if I put down anything wet on top of them, they will move around, unlike the china marker that will actually stay um, in place just where you see it there. So I'm putting down a variety of different colors on my base layer here. And where I put it really doesn't matter because it's not gonna show in the end. But what will show, and one of the things that I love about this process of building up layers is I'll be scratching into the wet acrylic paints when I layer them on, and then some of these colors underneath will show through. That yellow marker is also a china marker or also known as a grease pencil. And this purple one that I'm using now is an ink tense pencil. And again, ink tense is also water soluble, so those colors will shift around a bit, and that's okay with me. It's all part of the process. These little jars are just travel size jars that I keep handy in the house. I'm actually creating in my dining room on the table. Uh, the plastic that you see underneath me is 4 mil. It's the number 4 M-I-L plastic, and that's more of a heavier duty plastic, which I really like because I use it as my palette. Uh, so what you see, the brown under there, is actually the color of my table. All right, so I'm using black. Black is usually my next color that I use in my, in my process. I added a little bit of water to that to get it moving around. That small travel size jar needs refilling. Uh, I've run out of some, uh, run out of black paint in that one. The brushes I use are just um, cheap and expensive brushes that I buy at Michaels. If you're in the States, you're probably familiar with Michaels, but you can really get those at any craft art store. I don't like to buy the expensive ones, although I do have a few of them. And to be honest, I hardly ever use them because I'm worried about messing them up. I am pretty brutal with my brushes. As you can tell here, I am pushing down pretty hard. In that jar there, I have um, gesso, which is the color that I use for my white. So I'm just blending in some of the black that I already had on my brush into the white so that I create a gray color. Now I'm just wiping that off so I can continue on to the next color. And there's my water can there. All right, this next color is Indian yellow, which um, is kind of a transparent color when used directly out of the jar. And when you mix it with white, which is what I'm eventually gonna do here, um, it creates a much brighter, uh, whiter, um, brighter yellow color, which is really pretty. There, I'm dipping into my white and trying to lighten that up a bit. The paints that I use are called Nova Color Paints. Nova Color is a Southern California company, and you can order only directly from them. You won't find their paints in the stores. I really love using their paints. They're kind of in between a uh, liquid um, soft body, uh, between a soft body and a, um, I guess it's liquid. I'm trying to think of the, the right term, but um, fluid liquid or fluid, fluid uh, paints. So kind of in between those two, and I really like the consistency of it. So this red I'm using is a quinacridone red and I like adding the white to it really. Um, it's more of a pink actually. Really pretty color. All right, so there you can see now I've got a toothpick that I'm using and I'm starting to scratch into the surface. And from here, you probably can't see the detail. I think at the end I've got some detailed pictures to show you, but um, from here it's a little bit hard to see that some of those 
Neo Color 2 crayons are already starting to poke through a little bit. In addition to using the Nova colors, I've got a whole bunch of uh, Liquitex and Golden paints in tubes, the heavy body, and I'm trying to get those used up. So I've got a few of them that I'm using here. And those work great for this purpose as well. I just add a little bit of my white to it, which is my gesso, and that gets the paint more in a fluid state uh, so that I can move it around easily. I'm still using the same brush. I just, I tend to use the same brush for a while. I will eventually switch it around a little bit. Use a finer brush a little bit later. So here you can see on my palette, I'm just mixing in some white to the quinacridone red that I was using before, creating more of a pinkish color. And that orange I really like. Um, I believe it's from a store in Seattle. I'm trying to remember the name of it that actually closed down and it's just this gorgeous orange color and I've only got a little bit of that left. And this yellow that I'm using here is a candium, candium medium yellow, I believe is the right name for it. I don't have the jars in front of me. So this video I sped up by just a tiny bit, so it's not real time, it's just a little bit faster than real time. But I think you can still see everything that I'm doing here. I think I've got a purple that I'm putting on now. And I don't recall the specific name, but I think it was a golden uh, purple color. So I'm just throwing on paint. I don't think too much during this process as I'm building up. I am just adding colors wherever I feel like adding colors and just covering my surface pretty much everywhere. Now, if I used a bigger brush, I can certainly cover my surface a whole lot faster, but I really like using the small brushes, which allows me to add bits of color here and there and adds a lot more interest to it as opposed to just a solid color uh, thrown on there and um, covering up a lot of it. And that was a toothpick I was using again. I like doing that several times during this process. And some of those markings will end up getting covered up as I throw on the next layer, but I still like to uh, scratch through because some of those are going to show in the very end. Now here I got a different brush. This is a fine line brush and I am just adding a little bit of water and using the existing colors I have and just starting to add some interesting shapes and filling in colors here and there. Obviously I love to do circles. Uh, some of you may know that a lot of my inspiration comes from fields of flowers and most of my paintings are all about meadows of flowers um, and showing different, to me these are all the, the different markings that I see when I look out at um, a field of flowers. So I'm representing those through my mark making.
If you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can also follow me there. Just look up Betty Krauss Art. And I pretty much post daily on both of those, but uh, probably a little bit more so on Instagram than I do on Facebook. But I've been an act a very active user on uh, both of those platforms. So here I've got um, smaller circles, larger circles. I'm trying to add some balance. Um, at this point, I'm already starting to think more in terms of what the finishing pro finished product will look like. So uh, with my mark making, I'm starting to add a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, again, I've got the toothpick out and I am rolling it around trying to get some of the paint off of it and just scratching through here and there. So I'm kind of working around those circles that I made earlier because I kind of like them. Some of them are going to show in the end product, but um, not all of them. I think I end up uh, covering up some of them as I go, and that's okay. I know that they're there. probably notice that I don't slow down all that much as I go through this process. Towards the very end, you'll see me hesitating a bit, and that's when I know that I'm nearing the end and I'm going to be finishing it up. It's when I start to really think a lot and I can't seem to find anything else that I want to do to the painting, and that's one of my signals uh, that, I'm, that I'm nearing the end. The other one is that I absolutely love it, so I'm looking for that moment that there's nothing more I can do and, and I'm in love with it. And sometimes that doesn't happen right away. Sometimes I have to walk away from it because I'm sitting in front of it for so long that I can't really see it. And so I need to, at some point, I'll stop and, and it's usually at the point where, you know, I really love what I see in front of me and I'm going to give it a rest, um, give it a chance to completely dry and then come back to it. And oftentimes I find that when I come back to it, I am much happier with it than at the moment that I was creating it and trying to finish it. Because uh, again, I've been sitting in front of it for, for so long that I, I really can't see it the way I need to. This is a red paint that I'm, um, I think it's a CAD red that I'm using right now. Adds a bit of brightness. A happy color, just like some of the others. Now here I've muted out the color a bit. So I like to balance it out and not have all bright colors directly out of the jar. I like to mix as I go, as you can see on my, on my palette there. And having muted colors next to vibrant colors really makes your, your, those bright colors pop even more. So I try to add some, uh, some amount of um, muted colors or neutral colors. Here I'm adding green, and this is um, a green-yellow from Golden, and I've added a little bit of white to it, uh, one of my favorite colors. Although... They're all my favorites, so they all make me happy. So I had added some white, and now you can see it's a little bit darker, so I'm using it more directly out of the bottle there, um, giving it more of that true green color.
One of the things that I like to do when I'm painting large, uh, sometimes when I'm painting small as like this as well, is I like to take pictures as I go and then take a look at the picture as opposed to just staring directly at the art piece or even just walking away. So turn around, walk out of the room, uh, walk out of your studio and uh, then come back in and take a look at it. And it really gives you a new perspective, a uh, different, different way of looking at it gives you a break from it and allows you to look at it with a fresh set of eyes. So I'm blending some colors here and one thing that I've learned to do is when I do blend colors it allows me to harmonize all the colors and they work so much better together when I've got them blending like that instead of just always working with them directly out of the jar. So we're not quite there yet. There's still some work to be done. It's not quite uh, pulled together just yet. So you can see I'm putting down another layer in that top corner. Uh, some of these areas are going to have four to five layers. Some of them might have a little bit more than that, depending on if I liked that area or if I didn't. And if I didn't, I continue to build up the layers. So here I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm trying to look at how to pull it all together. I'm using a Neo Color 2 crayon here. And it is water soluble, so I have to keep that in mind when I'm ready to varnish. So if this is going to be closer to the top coat, I'm going to have to be very careful when I'm varnishing. I like using a liquid varnish on my paintings as opposed to a spray. The spray, I just don't like the toxic smell of them. Although I have used them before, it's just it takes a long time for that smell to dissipate. So again, I'm using crayons here, just adding some interest and a different level of um, character to it as opposed to just using the paintbrush. Another great thing to think about when you're painting is colors that complement each other. So to me, you know, this purple and red next to each other looks great. Purple and green next to each other looks great. Um, I try to kind of bring those together so that they're playing off one another and complementing each other. And here's the golden purple I have in a heavy body. And I'm using my fine little brush again, which sometimes I use more than just to make circles. I like to paint with it sometimes because what it does is it kind of skips over the surface as I've been building up texture and allows colors underneath to peek through more. You can see here, I'm starting to slow down a little bit. I'm, I'm thinking a little bit more about composition and how I'm going to pull this together to finish it. You can also find my available original artwork and prints of a lot of my artwork that already sold. 
can be purchased um, in canvas, on metal, or on paper. And you can find all of those at my website, which is www.bettykrausart.com. So here I'm continuing to make marks and using a variety of different colors, kind of going back over some of the things that I've already done. That purple circle I didn't really care for. I thought it stood out a little bit too much. I wanted it to blend in a bit more. So I'm just going over it with some white mixed in with um, kind of a pinkish color. When you're creating, don't be afraid to try out different tools and see what, what works for you and what you like. There's so many tools out there. There's um, so many different ways to, to paint, to apply paint. And experimenting is, is really a lot of fun. Like here you can see I'm actually painting with this liner type of brush as opposed to using it just to, to make lines or circles. And I kind of discovered that just playing around and testing it out. And then I discovered that I really like the way my paintings look when I do that. So I'm really not using the paintbrush the way it was intended to be used. But, but then again, it's more exciting and fun that way. This painting and two others that I painted at about the same time, one, one right after another, all ended up selling at one of my recent art festivals and it went overseas to Asia. The gentleman was um, heading out that evening on a flight, so I had these actually all matted and framed and I wrapped up everything for him and he said he was gonna find room in his suitcase. So it's kind of exciting to know that um, my artwork is being enjoyed somewhere over on the other side of the world. So you can really tell I'm starting to hesitate here because um, I'm not, not done, but yet I'm not 100% sure what else I want to do. So it's not so much hesitating as it is just slowing down and, and thinking it through a little bit more. So I'm back to using the Neo color to crayon. I really love this blue color. And I think it adds just a little touch of complementary color to, to all the others. So all these layers of paint are not dry yet. So drawing on it with a crayon is actually picking up paint. So um, in a sense, I'm kind of scratching through again, getting to some of the under layers as I'm trying to add some paint or some, excuse me, some uh, color onto it. If I remember correctly, the day that I worked on this, it was pretty hot in the house. So a lot of this paint is drying fairly quickly because I have thin layers of paint on it. Sometimes when it's not so warm and the paint isn't drying fast enough, then I have to set it aside and let it dry before I can continue with mark making. Here I've got a yellow china marker and attempting to make some marks. And the small pencil you see here that I am using is a Prismacolor pencil. 
and I tend to use a lot of those. Um, sometimes I use them at the very beginning as well on my first layers. Not so much that they're going to show through, but just giving me a chance to loosen up and put some marks down. And sometimes I use my fingers to make little dots on the paper. Okay, I'm going to get my toothpick out one last time and see where else I can pick up some paint, remove paint, and scratch to the bottom surface. All right, so I'm thinking I'm pretty much done here, and I'm liking the way it's turned out. You can kind of see a bit more all that scratching I did into the surface. I've got some pictures at the very end for you as well. All right, so it'll be just a second, and I've got my next video coming on in just a moment. Didn't realize I had such a big gap there of of just a black screen. All right, so it's going to start now. Here we go. All right, so what I am doing here is I allowed this to thoroughly dry, and I'm trying to position myself so you guys can see what I'm doing. After it dries, there tends to be little um, dried paint balled up on the surface. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to remove that by scratching in and just um, taking that off so that I have a smoother surface to work with. All right, so I'm going to be using a lot of uh, Prisma color pencils here. Got my sharpener ready. And I'll just go through and start making all kinds of marks. I'll, I'll outline things. I will make some more circles. Um, I might color in a few areas. Sometimes I'd like to use the Prisma color pencils uh, to brighten my paint that I already put down. So using it for a variety of different reasons. Here's a white one. Yep, I'm looking for something else. Let's see what else I'm looking for here. I think I'm looking for my white china marker. There it is. So the white, pr white Prismacolor pencil works great too, but I really like the China marker uh, because it just goes on it a little bit thicker. And so even though I had kind of a whitish, pinkish paint up there, I like coming back in with the China marker just to brighten it up a little bit more. So for me to create this way, the key is to continue moving and keep it loose. You can see how I'm holding my pencil. I'm not holding it like I'm going to be writing something. I'm holding it loosely. I find that if I start slowing down too much, then I'm being too deliberate and it starts to not look, uh, I don't know, kind of free and loose.
I often try to add white to all of my paintings. I like the, the brightness that it uh, provides. Grease pencil allows you to rub it in if, you, if you're trying to soften it up a bit, and that's what I was doing there. All right, tapping of my fingers means I'm not sure where else I want to go here. I'm using the Neo Color 2 crayon again, and this is on the final layer, so that means I'm going to be very careful when I put down my gloss varnish on top of it. I'm going to when I when I put the varnish down, I don't brush over it um, all that much. I, I try to do one brush one brush stroke over um, each section so that I'm not going back and forth and moving that color around. put down Neo Color 2 crayon and I put a little water on top of it to move it around. All right, there's my little pencil. I'm going to be calling this one done. And I ended up naming this one Everything's Coming Up Roses. It was a name that came to me uh, well after I finished it and thought it was appropriate. On the back, which you're not going to see here, but on the back I put the title, I sign it, I put uh, the year, and I put the location since I uh, travel and I work out of several different areas. Um, I like to, uh, lately I've been putting uh, what city I was in when I, when I created the piece. All right, pencil went down, so I think I'm calling it done. So here's um, the completed piece, a photo of it. Um, there you go. So you can see my title and my other information and my website information. And here's some close-up shots. So I try to get a, a close-up of each section. So this is the upper left corner. This one is the lower right, if I remember correctly. And there's my signature in the lower left. I think I've got one kind of in the center there as well. One more at the very end. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, check me out on Facebook or Instagram. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to watch more. Thanks.